All right, welcome to Assassin's Creed Rebellion. For those who never actually played this game before, I guess the first question would be, where in canon does this actually fall? In fact, some people said it's not really canon because of the number of heroes that you have, some of which do not even exist in the certain timeline. As you can see here, we have Cassandra, who was a hero you get from one of the Helix events, and she is from AC Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You can see that in the, in the bio here. And you'll probably recognize her if you ever played Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There is a lot of what I would call fan service within this game in order to pull out certain characters from other Assassin's Creed installments and let you play as them. Though I will say the original cast of characters, the ones that you can actually earn in-game without doing any of the side events, all are within Renaissance period timelines, somewhere around the end of the 15th century. Uh, in fact, the main character of this entire thing is a man, I gotta find him here, um, by the name of Aguilar, there he is, De is Denira. Okay, you may recognize him from the cute little chibi character um, from the Assassin's Creed movie in 2016. That actually also took place in Spain at the exact same time. As to where this fits in the timeline, I've read several things that the game is a precursor to the movie itself. And others say that it happens directly after. But regardless of that, however you really want to line it up. This character at the end of the Assassin's Creed movie, the 2016 version, was still alive and functioning. So this would also have happened in and around that time period. Whether you want to say it's before or after, that's completely up to you. Um, so for the most part, everyone else, as you can see here, are all dor born during the Renaissance You'll see a good number of these people are born during the Renaissance. I'm only trying to pick people like my first thought was this was actually a spinoff character from one of the assassin, the Assassin's Creed spinoff games. They had those three that took place like in India, China and Russia. Most people don't even know they exist because they are that sort of out there. But in fact, it's actually not. And it's really neat when you actually read her bio, which you can see right here. Um, it, he, she actually met Ezio Auditore during the Renaissance, which would have been the main character of Assassin's Creed II. So she actually left China, met Ezio, and then eventually went back to China. So she actually was born at a roughly the exact same time. And if I remember correctly, Ezio even does come at some point to Spain to help out the Spanish Brotherhood. I believe it actually even says you know, he, he's the master of um, the Italian Brotherhood of Assassins and eventually does see during his various travels to fight the Templar Order, Ezio traveled to Spain and helped the local Brotherhood fight the Templar-led Inquisition. I'm trying to remember. I thought it was in one of the I don't want to say spin-offs, but one of the sub chapters of Assassin's Creed 2, whether it's Revelation or yeah, Revelation or, or uh, um, was it Resistance or Rebellion or Brotherhood. One of those, I thought he went to Spain. Maybe I'm wrong. I cannot quite remember at this point in time. So real quick, we're going to talk about the basics of what Assassin's Creed Rebellion is. So it is a mobile game that's on iOS, Android and does follow a fairly neat story from 15th century Spain. Now, it is a game that you can spend a lot of money on, but you don't actually have to. Everything is just time-gated at that point. So if you look at the actual store, because this is always what people say with mobile games, is can I play the game without spending money? A lot of times, yes. They are fairly aggressive with their monetization. You'll see there's a couple things that we'll talk about later. You can buy extra DNA cubes. This is how you unlock the hero. You have to get DNA fragments, but there are some other ways to do that, which we'll talk about. They have the daily selection, which again, it's using Helix credits. Those are the cash shop currency, but again, you can 
very, very slowly earn them from the game, as well as gold coins. You'll see that currency as well. And here you can buy the different Helix credits that'll allow you to do various things. Like I said, you can actually refresh the store because they give you a certain number of items each day. Um, but you don't really need to do that. You can also buy raw resources, whether it be training manuals, gold, lumber, stone, etc. Again, all of these are earnable in the game. It just depends on how fast you really want to do this. If you look at my particular hero roster you'll see i have a lot of five star people they all have really good gear like there's a good number of them that are really really high up there in their rankings i will also say i have spent a little money on this game but not a lot just a little bit probably probably under a hundred dollars over the past two years but i have been playing for about two years in order to unlock everyone because there is a lot of limiting factors first off your limiting factor is going to be this little item right up here your training or your um, information room. This is get generating intel. You need intel in order to run the various missions. So this again is a limiting factor. For my characters, again, this it, as you progress the story, the total number of items you actually get goes up. So you can hold more. I'm very high in. 70 seems to be the max. And as the characters get leveled up they also tend to help you out a little bit with being able to increase it but roughly every six hours this thing fills out the 70 so you can hold at least at the end game 220 max so you can see it's quite a while the next limiting factor is coins you get them from both running mission and from passively just letting it add up over time depending on the heroes you pick they often have different skills you'll see right here there's a trait called accountant this hero can store more coins when the treasure in the treasury thanks to her accounting skills increases the max storage capacity of treasury by 15 percent so they do have these perks like hq perks that only affect what they're doing within your your headquarters active skills and passive skills but for now you'll see this helps with coins Another limiting factor is how you level up your heroes. In order to level up your heroes, there's multiple factors for that. You need both gold coins and you need a special type of currency. Again, you can earn them through various side missions called codexes. They allow you to actually level up your character. And you can see I actually have a couple of characters in the, these training rooms leveling up now. You can see I'm leveling from 37 to 46 on this character and that's how many of the different codices it, it took they all offer different values but obviously as you start off you'll start with the smaller pages but as you go tier up tier up tier up you get better stuff but it also takes more and i think in order to even start this guy training it was something like two hundred thousand coins or something to go from 37 to 46 it was not a small amount the next limiting factor is building materials here again you can gather building materials from almost every mission which i will show but you can also get them passively by sending people out in order to do this again this is this limiting factor only affects upgrading your different rooms and building new rooms in your headquarters as you can see here's my headquarters as you upgrade the rooms they allow you to do more stuff, craft better weapons, house more people, heal faster, uh, increases recruitment times, et cetera, et cetera. So there it is. The next level, the recruitment level, or the next hindering level, I should say, is this room right here, the ceremony room. This is the ranking that I showed you earlier with five star being the highest. As you earn enough DNA, you unlock the character. Then... I'll show you a character that doesn't have one, this guy right here. We go to progression. It shows both his level, which is separate, because he does have a certain level, which does increase all of his base stats, and then his genetic memory synchronization, which increases his tier, which affects what he can actually equip, as well as how good of his skills are. So there is that level in there as well. As they go up, obviously much better. And also the quality of the hero, you'll see he's legendary. And I'll pull up a different 
actually this is a perfect example right here so this is a legendary tank character right here level 50 all five gear okay level 50 all five gear his power score is 3435 here's another tank character he's only epic this is a step down all 50 all tier gear 2668 clearly their quality it affects them let's go down to the next tier which i think is uncommon and i do have one she's a good one but i want another tank character this guy two two three five you can see he went down another level and his power level even though he's wearing the same gear he doesn't have quite the power the thing that really sets legendary characters apart are their unique weapons and armor that really do add a lot more power than everything else and they also add special skills and abilities so it's really cool as well all right, so those are some of the limiting factors. So again, you're limited only in progression based on the number of intel you have, your current money, okay? So intel locks how many missions you can do a day and retries, etc. Money affects upgrading your HQ, upgrading your characters through leveling, and also upgrading their rank. You have to pay a fee. So money is also involved. Oh, as well as crafting new weapons and armor you'll see right here this gentleman is working on a tier five sword of damocles for my new um cassandra hero who just hit rank five so it does take a long time to do that as well um, but again you don't need to spend money that's just what it is and then to upgrade your hq you need to use raw resources the wood and the stone i believe it is oh there it is they don't actually, they don't put it in such a really nice area, and I hate the way they change the UI. But you can see the stone and the wood are required to upgrade all of your buildings up to various tiers. Once it's all upgraded, you're good to go. Next screen I will show. This is where you actually go on the different missions. These Helix Rift events, those are the special events where you earn heroes that may not necessarily fit the timeline. You have Animus Challenges, which, depending on what they want you to do, they change. They do give you an ability to get more things. Uh, as you can see, there's a good bit of mission intel, as well as some potions, coins, and look, there are those cash shop currency items. So you can earn those in the game as well. By participating in these Helix events, they do actually have leaderboards that the higher up the leaderboard you get, you get bonus DNA for the featured hero you're trying to unlock as well as various other rewards such as gold and upgrade materials you have these random animus bounty events which let you replay missions that have their original mission stripped out and you're able just to earn some raw rewards in this case i could earn some extra money doing this hey look the next one coming up in six hours allows me to earn a little bit of cash shop currency I should, and I say cash shop currency, but in reality, it's not really cash shop. It's just the cash shop currency you buy that allows you to buy things like DNA cubes, etc. You do earn DNA cubes through, as you can see, your daily login rewards. Uh, in six hours, I'll get some more potions. And you can see there's a lot of extra DNA cubes, etc. As well as like a featured hero of the month. And then we have a campaign. This was just added this was a great way of actually unlocking a few extra heroes i just reset it all so i could do it again um, you don't get to earn the rewards again but i wanted to free up my heroes because i needed to with how the campaign works when you use a hero you can't reuse them later so you could see i stopped at mission 20 it's as far as i could get before i used up all my heroes i have since upgraded a couple of them so now they should be slightly better so i can try to get these last little bit of dna for these new heroes that they added specifically from AC Valhalla. The next thing is the campaign mode. Oh, there are do daily objectives. Now I finish them every day, but every day you'll be able to do so many of different kinds of missions in order to, again, get various things such as the cash shop Helix currency, the gold and mission Intel. Going to the main map, we actually have, this is what the main map looks like of Spain. Each region is separated 
I guess the best way to look at it within the region is the tier quality that you'll generally face. Generally, tier one heroes are good for region one, region two, region three, region four, region five, etc., etc. As you go up, you're going to need the power level is going to increase over and over. So it's best if you're doing region five to have region five heroes. You know, you don't necessarily have to, but it will be very difficult. You'll see on the map. Those gold icons are the different chapter stories, which we will get to later. And then you also have three other icons. Standard missions allow you to earn the codexes in order to increase the level of your character. The loot missions give you crafting materials so that you can craft more items for your different characters. And the legacy missions, these allow you to actually get a chance, the drop chance there, to get DNA for the different heroes that I would say are canon to the story because they tend to be characters that were alive during the Renaissance. The only way to earn DNA for those other special characters is during those Helix Rift events, which I would say are non-canon for Rebellion, but just a fun way, like a little Easter egg. Otherwise, you'll start your missions and you can follow through the story. That is the entire premise of what we're doing here for Assassin's Creed Rebellion. I wanted to give you a basics of what the game actually is, and then we're going to actually go through the story all the way from Chapter 1 all the way up to the final chapter here in Region 5, which is Chapter 28. So that's what we'll do. We'll go over, see how I play through the missions. Most of them are going to be very easy because I'm fairly over leveled but the main point of this is so you can see the story of this game because especially region five it took me an insanely long time to actually beat the story of this game because these last couple missions are very 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 hard to do with generic heroes until you start getting legendary heroes you can beat it with generic i've done it but it was almost impossible so it it was it was difficult you had to have the right heroes and the right amount of RNG on your side in order to win. But, yeah, so we'll actually see what the story is of Rebellion so we can fit it into our other Assassin's Creed playthroughs so we can have the entire canonical story of Assassin's Creed. All right. See you in the next one.